Welcome to Echoes International Podcast, with teaching, interviews and stories of what God is doing straight from the mission field and also within the UK. For more podcasts, stories and opportunities to get involved, check out our website at echoesinternational.org.uk and our other social media channels. This is, our, as we've said already, this is our 150th year um, and we wanted to celebrate that for two reasons. And the first reason was actually to look back and to give God thanks for what he's done. And that's part of the exhibition. So hopefully you take the time to do that uh, when you're here and start to feel and see uh, what's going on. But the second part actually was also to then think about the challenge of what God is going to do and our part in that. And that's very much uh, something that's come through from the conference already. Um, Each of the folk have presented have given that challenge of our response, this generation, what are we going to do? And if you think of the 150 years, and actually probably 30, 40 years before that, the need of the world was the gospel. And those men and women, they gave up everything to see their generation one for Christ. And that's quite inspiring, and it's good to look back from a historical perspective, but it's also really important to think about, well, what's my response? How do I respond to that? What's my role in mission? And that's the challenge of today, really. And if you think of what happened over the last 150-odd years, God started to change huge countries. South America, parts of Africa, parts of Asia, Europe, where the gospel was preached and men and women believed and countries were transformed. But yet, that 42%, that represents the part of the world that is still unevangelized. Vast parts of our world uh, don't know who the Lord Jesus is. And the challenge of mission is not so much just to think about where God is and the strength of the assembly is all through the world. And it's great to be be encouraged by that. But also, how do we respond to that challenge? And what what happens about the 42%? And there's all sorts of different ways that those folk who are unreached can be reached. Andy spoke earlier on about the migrants who are coming to Europe. That's an opportunity to evangelize people who would not normally have an opportunity to hear the gospel. But as I got ready for this, something struck me. I was looking at a course um, about uh, mission. And one of the parts in the course was talking about changing your perspective. And I'm going to do a little bit of that today. um, Because I was quite encouraged by what I read. It was an encouragement to know what God is doing in the world today. And the reason I got quite excited by that I remember about 12 years ago, my first experience of cross-cultural mission was in Angola, actually. I spent some time with Ruth Hadley. And I remember in particular one visit, we were going through from Luanda to Sarimo, and we passed by all these villages and towns. And just about in every town and village, as we passed through, Ruth would say, there's the assembly there. That's the assembly. We're passing by the assembly there. And it was just an encouragement to think of what God has done in a country over 70 odd years. And so I was encouraged by that. I'm going to try and encourage you. So hopefully I will do that over the next couple of slides. Um, 7.9 billion people in our world today. That's roughly the population. And this is roughly the breakup of that population. 10% it's estimated are evangelical Christians, disciples of the Lord Jesus across the whole of the world. 20% 20, 20% of them would be described as nominal Christians. And we've got folks in the world, in the UK, who would describe themselves as Christian, but they are not trusting the Lord Jesus as their saviour. And about 40% of the world have access to the gospel. So they either have a church in their town, or they, they know of believers, or they, they know who Jesus is, and they've heard the message, or they know what the gospel is about. But 30% of the world have no access to the gospel whatsoever. They don't know a Christian. They've never picked up a Bible. 
They've never heard a verse. They know nothing of the Lord Jesus. And that's our challenge in our day and in our generation. Back to the 42%. You might be thinking, why is it not 30%? 42% is the unreached. But there are some who have got connections. There are some who have got access. Not great, but they've got access. But 30% have no idea. John and I were talking to Harry Lannan a number of months ago, and he describes a conversation with a man from Afghanistan in a park in Greece. And as Harry spoke to um, that person, um, he had no idea of the Lord Jesus. Never heard the message. Never had a Bible. Never heard of the Lord dying on the cross for him. And he was able just to share that. For the first time, he heard that message. And he's still corresponding with him as well. But just to encourage you even more, the Lord Jesus said, I will build my church. And I got quite encouraged by this, so I'm going to encourage you as well. So first of all, to think about what God is doing at this present moment or over the last number of years. So in the Philippines, for instance, 1975, it's reckoned there are about 3,000 churches. Today, they reckon there's about 55,000 churches. The growth and the impact of the gospel. South Korea, in the 1900s, Christianity was minimal. They now reckon 17% of the country are believers in the Lord Jesus. That's just in the last hundred odd years. Um, Iran reckons in 1979 there was about 500 believers. There's now, they reckon, over 100,000. And that's in a country where it's very, very difficult to be a Christian. And this one that really encouraged me in China, we've all known the story of China, but folk who are connected to China, they reckon there's more Christians in China today than there are in the United States. Such is the growth of the gospel. And if you actually look at the world today, the world, we, reckon that it, we reckon that the population of the world is growing by about 1.5% per annum. And the experts, and I'm not one of them, but the experts tell me that Christianity is growing at the rate of 3.5% per annum. So it's growing more than the population of the world. And that's quite encouraging as well. And I just was reminded as I looked at these stats, it started with 11 men as they were commended and asked, commissioned to go and preach the gospel to Jerusalem, to Samaria, and the other parts of the earth. And again, I'm not trying to guilt anyone, but the challenge to you and I, to our generation, is how do we respond to that? First of all, I would encourage us to pray, and we've got, obviously, the magazines um, just another reminder for you, you can still order if you haven't. Uh, if you're Scottish or Irish, you'll like a deal. And if you order them before the 15th of November, you get them a little bit cheaper. So uh, we would encourage you, if you haven't placed your order, to go ahead and do that. And if you've never ordered the magazine, if you've never ever subscribed to Echoes International, uh, you can do that. And if you do that for the first year, it's free. And we're doing that purposely to encourage folks to be more involved and hear more of what God is doing across the world. And more importantly, and I love when I meet folk like this, every so often I come across somebody who has the magazine and they're praying for a mission every day. It's part of their routine. And they know all about what God is doing because they actually are praying actively for mission in our day and in our generation. Just to also remind you, we talked about Tilsley, Ben mentioned it. I'm not going to mention first serve, he's done a better job than I have. But we're also helping people to equip better by sending them to Tilsley College. We're happy to try and identify individuals who think that God has had a call on their life and we're happy to try and equip them as well. So we would encourage that as well. And finally, I know my time is away, um, we're going to encourage you to try and uh, buy the book if you have not already done that. Because it is a real encouragement. As you read through the pages and just read of what God has done, in, 19, uh, in the 100 year anniversary, um, the editors and trustees decided to publish a very academic, an excellent book called They Turned the World Upside Down. It was a history of what God was done, God had done over those 100 years. And we decided this time to do something a little bit different in trying to be just recognize the variety of what God is doing. 
we looked at folk who either are serving at the present moment or people who had served, and we put together this book with 150 pages, 150 stories, 150 messages, what happened over the last 150 years. And we would encourage you to buy that. I asked um, Nathaniel to put the slide together to give me a Christmassy hint. I don't know I like talking about Christmas in November, but I'm on a sales drive here. So um, if you buy two books, we'll get you a third one free. And they're great Christmas presents. You know, forget the, forget the towels this year or the, you know, the stuff you normally buy. Buy a couple of books to really inspire you to see what God has actually done. Um, and I know I'm being a little bit frivolous at the end, but it is good to hear what God is doing and to rejoice in that. But for every one of us, and it's not just about young folk, actually. I remember a mission conference where someone at 65 gave up everything and went and served for four or five years. So it's not just about individuals uh, when you're young. Every one of us can serve, but we can also pray and we can get more involved. And that's the encouragement today. We hope you're encouraged and inspired and ready to answer the call. Thank you for listening. 